What's up, YouTube? This is Clay with the Clayway here in Muskegon, Michigan. And today we've got a 3.0 Mercedes-Benz CRD diesel here in the shop. Deleted. We did the oil cooler on it. We did block offs on the intake and stuff like that. And when we got all done, it had a code for a B60 exhaust gas pressure sensor. So I figured out that Maybe I broke the pressure sensor, but it gave me a good opportunity to show you folks how to check these pressure sensors and let you know that most sensors work identically to this one. If they're a three-wire sensor, they generally send in five volts from the computer. They have a ground from the computer, and they send back a signal to the computer saying, hey, I'm working. And in this situation, I don't believe it's sending back a signal that says, hey, I'm working. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you a diagram, explain it to you in layman's terms. So simple people like me can understand without having a bunch of expensive equipment. Now, the test that I'm going to do in this video required that I unplug the electrical connector on the top of the sensor. And I'm going to show you that here in a couple moments. So all we're going to need to do this is a digital multimeter, uh, a couple of alligator clips, and I've got two separate kind of alligator clips. I got one black one, one green one, doesn't matter what color it is, it's wire to wire. And I'm going to use these terminal keys to probe into the wire terminals to test for the voltages that I need. And we're going to do some simple fundamental test on this thing and show you how it works. And this will lead you into other avenues of when you're testing other three wire circuits. Like I said, they generally just send in voltage and send out voltage and they tell the computer what it's doing based upon the voltage. Now we need to understand how this sensor works and how it operates. So first off, we need to look at the diagram. We're gonna notice by the diagram that it has one, two, three wires. One is for five volts, one is for ground, and one is for output sensing to recognize the fluctuation of the diaphragm in the sensor. Now as air travels up into this hole on the back side, it's gonna fluctuate that voltage to the ECM if it's working properly. When we're looking at this sensor, we're gonna consider this top portion home which is actually the number three ground. This outside portion, which is the white wire, is gonna be our sensing wire, which sends signal back to the ECM, which is gonna be on our right side. Our left side panel is gonna be our five volts reference from the computer. And with the key turned on, that should always have five volts reference. So with our key turned on and all of our indicator lights illuminated without the engine running, we should be able to check the wire for five volts reference. It is important to do all of these checks. If you don't do them, you may get a misdiagnosis. Okay, so for our first test, we're gonna hook our ground lead up to a ground right there. And we're gonna take our plug off and using the red wire on the back side. We're gonna barely touch inside there. We're not gonna damage anything by slamming this in there. Now with that inserted in there, we should have about five volts, which is 4.9. And that is correct. That's telling us that our ECM is sending a signal down to the sensor. Now we wanna make sure that we're not on something conductive so it doesn't short out. Now taking our positive lead and hooking it up to a constant 12 volt source and then taking our ground lead and hooking it up. We're gonna check for ground and make sure that we don't have a bad ground system and it's sending ground to our sensor. Now with that pushed in there, we should have battery voltage because battery voltage is the same over here, which is why we don't have 4.9 volts and we only have 11.5. Now, most of you folks are not gonna have the shroud off of here, which is no big deal. You should still be able to remove the sensor even with the shroud on here. But we need to first disconnect it. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna push on the little rocker right here at the top 
right there where my thumbnail is. And if it doesn't come off, push it downward and pull it up sharply with the rocker pulled back. That goes for just about any sensor. Now we're gonna take a 27 millimeter and we're gonna unscrew this. And you should be able to get up underneath here with the 27 millimeter and unscrew it. And in some situations, this could be unscrewed with the 15 16 Just depends on the model of what you're working on. Be careful when you go to pull this out, there is a seal on here that could get lost. So make sure you have that on your new one if you end up replacing it. Now all multimeters have what's called continuity. It's this little symbol right here. And what happens when you turn a multimeter onto continuity is when two wires are connected, it will emit a noise, meaning that you have a connection between the two wires. So that's why our multimeter has a battery inside it because it sends a signal through the wire and it says, hey, I'm connected and I've bridged a joint. So this is basically telling you that all this power is being sent through this wire and you don't have a broken wire in the center of there. Continuity tests are probably one of the most important tests with electrical because it tells you if you have a break somewhere. Now this next test is going to tell us that we have a bad sensor, but we don't wanna stop here without doing the very last test, so keep that in mind. Now, we're testing for continuity, so we still have it set at continuity. We have one of our alligator clips hooked here, and we have the other end of that alligator clip hooked to our home, which is our ground, which is post number three. And when generally, when you touch the outside of this, we should have continuity, meaning this should be grounded out, but it's not. And that pretty much tells us that the sensor is bad, but we still wanna make sure that it's not sending voltage back to the ECM and that's not being what's being received because it could just ground out through this and because the ECM actually sends a ground, I could be mistaken, but I wanna make sure that it's actually bad. Well, apparently uh, I left my battery or left my switch on on my multimeter. So I'm gonna have to use the power probe and the power probe is great and it does a continuity test just like the just like the meter does, because when you take this, it's the same thing. So now we're gonna test this new part and see if it actually reads ground like the other one was supposed to. Now with our alligator clip connected to our home in there, we're able to touch the body and get ground. Which we do, so we know this sensor is good and our other one was bad. So for the very last test, okay, for this portion of the test, We've got one alligator connector to a ground that's ran into our ground side of our voltage meter. Our voltage meter is set on 200 volts DC. Now with the sensor installed and the engine running, we should get 0.5 volts or higher. Now very carefully, we've inserted our probe down in there and hooked our black alligator clip to our positive side of our voltage meter. Now this is our let's say output side, which is the white wire, which sends the voltage signal as the vehicle is running to the ECM. Now with my sensor plugged back in, I work my throttle and my voltage should change, but it's not. So this tells us that we have a defective sensor and it needs replacing. Now, no matter what it is you're doing in life, if anyone else can do it, I promise you, you can do it too. Hopefully you folks get this and it makes sense to you. I tried to make it as easy and as layman as possible because not everybody knows this stuff. I had to learn it. So hopefully you learned a little bit of something too. A lot of vehicles work under this principle when they're using switches and sensors like this. So if it has three wires on it, you pretty much know how to test it no matter what it is. God bless folks. Have a great day.